What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode three of the MOV, the Media Overview. Today on episode three, we're going to look at some of the video games that I own. Now, you might be surprised by some of the games I have. And I know you're probably looking right now at a printer. Hello. I'm right here. But like I was saying, um, we're going to look at some of the video games I have. You might be surprised about what I have uh, and how far back it goes. But don't be too surprised. So, without further ado, let's take a look at my video game collection like you've never seen it before. Alright, first off, we're going to start out with the game cartridges that really got the video game business booming back in the mid-80s. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the Nintendo system. Now, the Nintendo system, as you know, debuted in 1985, late 84. It was, it went on to become the most popular video game console of all time. I don't know if it's been surpassed or not, but it's gone on to be one of the all-time greats. Now, of course, Nintendo did have to change with the times for a while. In fact, back in the early to mid-90s, it had to change to accommodate the new style almost like the new decade and millennium stuff. So, it came out with this. The Nintendo Top Loader. I don't know if I can fit that there. But basically, that's what it came out with. It came out with the Nintendo... There we go. The Nintendo Top Loader. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what it came out with. Basically, this is also referred to as the NES2. Uh, the reason this was created it's because a lot of people apparently were having problems with the games in the original NES. Like games getting stuck, you know, when you put them in, you have to push them down, games get stuck, games won't go in, things like that. But that was the, so that was the reason for the top loader's uh, curation. You know, it was also created and redesigned because of the fact that we had the Super Nintendo out at the time. So they needed like a little brother or like a NES companion or something. So the top loader was created, as you can see. It was created to accommodate that. Now, the only question was, would it still play your NES games? Yes, it would still play your NES games. But it also became known as the only NES system to play universal games almost. With the exception of the Famicoms, of course. But it was also the only NES system that you could take a game, an NES game made in Europe and you could play it on here. But what games do I play on that system? Well, what games do I play on the system? Well, let's take a look. Now, the first one I'm going to show you is, of course, one that every household has every original Nintendo came with, and that is Super Mario Brothers and the Duck Hunt, the Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt uh, game. That's, whoops, uh, need to watch that there, but the Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt combo game. Now, of course, they came individually packaged if you bought them separately. But this is what came packaged with the Nintendo system. Now this one, of course, I don't know if you can see that, is not the one that I, me and my family got with our original Nintendo. No, instead this is one I got in a, at, a, at a game exchange in Lawrence, Kansas. As a matter of fact, the game exchange was actually across the street from where I lived, so it was kind of convenient. But it works perfectly. And when you put it on the top loader, there you go. The only disadvantage though, the one thing I will say about the top loader before I forget about, the only disadvantage is it doesn't have an eject button like the Super Nintendo. You have to pull out the cartridges. But yeah, that's one of the games I still currently have. And believe it or not, I've downloaded the Super Mario Brothers game on the Wii Virtual Console. So, 
I have it cartridge-wise and virtual console-wise. Go figure. Next game, of course, is the most popular Mario Brothers game possibly on the NES's history. I'm talking about Super Mario Brothers 3. That's right, Super Mario Brothers 3. This, believe it or not, is the original Mario Brothers 3 cartridge that me and my family got for, for Christmas. As a matter of fact, I can remember uh, me and my family, we lived, I think it was in Waterford, I believe. And this was packaged as a gift to me and my sisters. We opened it up, and it was Super Mario Bros. 3. And we were happy to get it. You know, because we had cousins that always got the games before us. Well, we got the game before them this time. So, uh, but yeah. And also, just like with Mario Brothers 1, I've also downloaded this on the Virtual Console as well. But yeah, that's the original cartridge me and my sisters got when we got, when we got the game of Super Mario Brothers 3. Next game. It may, be, it may look a little jacked up or, any, or something, but this game is NSK Baseball Stars. I know the cover doesn't show that, but if you look right here closely, it does. N NSK Baseball Stars. And um, I got this game from my cousin in Kansas, and it still works, believe it or not. It still works, but it's just a little uh, busted up, as you can see. A little, you know, busted up. It's, it still works, but like I said, a little busted. I don't, I don't know how that happened. I guess through, through a lot of moving or something like that. But it's a little busted up, but it still works. So, go figure. And the one thing I like about this game is the fact that it allows you to name your teams. And you can name them anything. You can name them, uh, you can name them the Oskaloosa Shitters. Or the Patterson Ass Kickers. Or the Modesto Jackasses, or things like that. No offense to any of the cities that I just mentioned. But I'm just giving an example of what you can do. You can actually name your teams that. Heck, you can even call them the... I don't know, you can call them the... the Death Valley Fuckers. <laughs> oh, you know. But again, it's just an example of how you can name your own teams on this game, and I like that. And again, it is beat up a little bit. It is kind of busted a little bit, but it still works. Hard to believe that. Baseball stars. All right, next game here. The next game here is actually the only uh, WCW World Championship Wrestling game ever on the Nintendo. This was back when WCW was still associated with the NWA. And by being associated with the NWA, hey, you had a lot of people. Like right here on the cover, you have the Road Warriors. And this is a year, I think, before they went to WWE. So you had the Road Warriors on here. You had characters like Ric Flair, Sting, Luger, Blanchard, Wyndham, I believe, uh, Gilbert, Garvin. You know, they were on here. And it was an okay game. I think probably one of the uh, probably better wrestling games at the time, if you will. It was a little stiff, a little tricky, but it was probably one of the better wrestling games of, at the time. And it's got good graphics, believe it or not. And it was produced by FCI, so I don't know if you've ever heard of them. But, uh, yeah. It's definitely, a good, it's definitely a game you'd want to check out. I don't know if this will ever come on the virtual console, but if it does, definitely check it out. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a decent game, but uh, still, it's uh, a little stiff for the only WCW wrestling game on the NES. And speaking of wrestling, of course we have WWF, or we could call it WWE, WrestleMania Challenge. This was actually one of the more notable and probably one of the more popular games on the NES, that uh, wrestling game-wise, that was made featuring the WWE, or F. And as you can see, it's made by LGN. Now I know a certain nerd doesn't like LGN and probably wouldn't take very kindly to this game, but it's got decent animation. I mean, yeah, the controls are a little hard to figure out, but what are you going to do? 
But it's a good collector.